And now I'm going to call uh, for the next presentation. He is the managing director of E plus E Electronic India Private Limited, a wholly owned subsidiary of E plus E Electronic GmbH Austria, having multiple subsidiaries across the uh, world, including US, China, South Korea, Italy, France, and Germany. He is an engineering graduate and management postgraduate and has uh, previously worked with industry leaders in the sensing domain in various progressive roles, including sales, business development, product development, product management, and quality management, etc. I'm talking about Mr. Ankush Bhandari, Managing Director, E plus E Electronic India Private Limited. Everyone, shall we give her a huge round of applause as he makes his way? It is in Austria. We were, uh, you know, founded in 1979, so approximately 50 years old company. Uh, and on the top, if you see, uh, from you know 1998, we have started uh, going global, and India was the recent one where we started our operations in 2022. Uh, we are part of Heidenhain International Group, which is kind of an automation group based out in Germany. Uh, we develop our own thin film sensors. Uh, on the back side, we have our uh, booth as well, where you can see the product. So. The same way Samsung or Intel or AMD, they produce their own mic uh, microchips, we do the same way. Uh, so we develop our own sensors. We are a certified quality management company and also a uh, partner on the Austrian Climate Alliance. What we offer is uh, these products. So we do air velocity sensors, we do CO2, which is carbon dioxide. We do dew point sensors. We do mass flow controllers and mass flow meters. We do humidity sensors, uh, moisture in oil, pressure, temperature, and the allied products. We distribute our business into two divisions. One is the element, wherein we supply these elements to sensor manufacturer who are our competitor. And the second side of the business is we develop our own sensors, which we give to the end customers, something like railway or other applications. What basically we do in railway is categorized into these four uh, uh, areas. First one is climate control, so it's kind of a comfort control, or you can say the HVAC system. The other thing which we do is in the pneumatic side for the compressed air systems, the brake services, and many other pantographs and other. Third, we do propulsion, wherein we do, uh, we do a lot of work with the transformer side, so moisture in oil and uh, you know, the gearboxes and other things, the sensors for those applications. And finally, we do a lot of business for the infrastructure side where we have products for weather monitoring on the stations and ice detections on the railway tracks. So coming to the first side, uh, the climate control. Uh, from morning, we have been talking about a lot of things uh, related to sustainability, uh, and uh, uh, I mean, we have uh, speakers who are, who are talking about T18 and Vande Bharat train and talking about all of the sustainability. But you know, a comfort system, HVAC system, a Mercedes without a good AC is of no use. So the comfort system is also very important in 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 a, in a train. It may or not may not be a very deciding factor, but it is always an important for passenger comfort. So we divide it into you know, several ways. One is the intercity rail traffic, uh, regional passenger rail, which is like RRTS, the light rail, which is like metro, uh, and the intercity rail is probably like the long distance train, the chair car trains, and the sleeper version of the Vande Bharat, which we talk in India. So how does a climate control system works? Uh, basically, we have more applications for the summer side because of the geographical and the climatic conditions in India. But uh, since uh, we, we cater to global world, uh, so the climate control system works for summer and winter both. In summer side, you have the outside air, which is hot. It gets into an HVAC unit, gets controlled, gets processed, and finally the passenger inside the train gets, uh, gets a comfort air or a good air quality. The second side is winter, where you heat the uh, outside air and uh, you know, uh, give the comfort to the passengers. Now, the earlier, the, the, the regular model used to be the rooftop HVAC, which is having 25% of the fresh air coming out, and the other air is the recirculated air. Now, what 
uh, nowadays is a modern HVAC system where you are doing the demand control depending on how many passengers are there in the train and really changing this delta of 25% fresh air into different aspects. So this is the comfortable position uh, on the on the right hand side you see so somewhere around 60-70% RH and between 40-70% to 70 RH is a comfortable area which you want to maintain in an HVAC system. So for that you would use a pretty high accurate humidity sensor. And the second thing which uh, nowadays and also in T18 which people are using is the CO2 sensor which is, which is defining how many passengers are there in the train. Uh, based on that you can control the, uh, control the fresh air input. So if you see uh, what are the challenges uh, in the cabin air treatment is the HVAC unit is also getting a lot of air from open doors, from other gaps and you have to really maintain the fresh air volumetric flow uh, so that you can maintain the, the, the comfort cooling and this can be done with the use of CO2 sensors. If you see the minimum fresh air requirement, uh, considering you want to measure, uh, maintain the CO2 concentration on the right hand side being 1000, above which the, uh, if you see it back, uh, you know, on the right hand side we have given how the CO2 level impact the human body. Uh, to keep it in check, you want to measure, you want to keep the PPM level at 1000 PPM or somewhere closer to that. But to keep that, you need a um, flow which is pretty high and the passenger might feel, you know, having a thrust of air coming on their body. So you really need to do the balancing of how the CO2 concentration and the flow of, uh, uh, flow, flow of the air is maintained to ensure that the comfort cooling is there, the quality of the air is good and also the passengers are not feeling the thrust of the air coming from the outlet. Uh, so this is uh, how you do it uh, to control uh, the airflow uh, considering the PPM levels to be at 600 to 1000. You would need somewhere around 18 to 24 meter cube per hour as a speed. And this is how now a modern HVAC system looks like with the introduction of CO2 sensor where you are having a damper uh, with which you are controlling how much amount of fresh air you want to induce into the system and rest of the air is the recirculated air. Uh, quite interestingly in India, uh, you know, the metro systems are funded by the state governments uh, or the metro uh, SPVs. So uh, there's a large amount of energy which is getting into the HVAC side. Uh, so 25% of the HVAC, 25% uh, of the energy is consumed by an HVAC system in a train. And you can consider it in a way that one train is consuming a, almost 700 household energy when it is running. So when we talk about sustainability, a large part of that is also energy uh, conservation. And with the introduction of CO2 sensor, it is high, there is a high possibility that you can control the amount of uh, fresh air you want to induce, which in turn reduces back the energy consumption. So we come back to it. Uh, on an occupancy level of 100%, uh, you still have a 25% uh, fresh air which is which makes the fact that you are not you are you are using the same energy but as the occupancy level gets down and you are automatically controlling it you can get a reduction up to 30% on the energy side this is a real life study examples on uh, on trains uh, in germany and berlin which we have done uh, if anybody is interested we can uh, we can share the data around it so we have done uh, the measuring points on uh, measuring points with the different temperatures and energy consumption is uh, monitored with and without energy saving function which means introduction of CO2 sensor and uh, the amount of energy which you are able to save is approximately 28% and based on that the amortization and uh, a good moisture uh, a good pneumatic system uh, would obviously control the uh, control or dry the air, but uh, when you monitor it through a uh, regular dew point sensor, you you are very sure that the air which you are inducing into different systems is the correct air or is the right air. On the right side, you can see this ISO standard which states that the railway systems need to have uh, the drying up to say minus 70 degree or minus 40 degree to ensure that the pneumatic system is not failing. 
this is also one part wherein you are uh, able to save the predictive maintenance, you are able to save on the maintenance cost. Sorry. So this is how the system looks like. So you have a compressor on the left side and a air dryer and you can install a dew point sensor uh, to ensure that the air which you are giving into different systems like air suspension, brakes, pneumatic doors, traction, uh, wipers, uh, sanding systems, uh, the f toilet flushing and everywhere, the, the air which is going is without any contamination, which ensures that uh, the life of the system is getting increased. It also ensures that uh, the icing is not happening and based on that, rusting is not happening on the pipes. So all in all, you are, uh, with the introduction of sensors, you are able to maintain and uh, ensure that the predictive maintenance as well as uh, the cost of the maintenance is getting reduced. So we supply uh, our dew point sensors, which is on the left side, and the mass flow meters to, uh, to monitor how much energy or the, how much compressed air is getting used uh, in the system. So we supply those two products into the pneumatic systems. The third is the propulsion system, wherein uh, we do a lot of work with the transformer side, and we are measuring the moisture in oil, which means the humidity of the oil to ensure that uh, the lubrication is not getting reduced. Uh, if, the moist, if the oil, uh, lubricating oil or the transformer oil is uh, having a lot of humidity, which, which can happen because of the oxidation, uh, the systems would get failed faster. And uh, on a regular basis, you have to do a Carl Fisher method to ensure that the moisture is in content or is, is in control. Uh, rather than doing this as an ongoing exercise, you can introduce a moisture in oil sensor in transformer side or anywhere on the traction side wherein you have a propulsion system. So the oil temperature when it is higher and it comes low, the margin of saturation of water content is very, very low, which means the amount of water vapor in the oil, uh, the failure chances are higher. So this is what we do uh, on the propulsion side. We have installed a lot of moisture in oil sensors into different local shades of uh, uh, railways and they have also bought a lot of lab equipments to ensure that the oil transformer oil is you know having the right amount of moisture so these are the systems what we have the final and the last thing what we do is on the infrastructure side uh, so the underground metros the elevated metros uh, we ensure that uh, there are sensors which are which are which are which are able to sustain the climatic conditions of the outside heat, and uh, they are giving the right input to the control stations to ensure there is no accidents, there is no uh, you know uh, icing or there is no rainfall or something. So we are giving the alerts through the weather monitoring systems uh, back to the control stations to ensure uh, you know the optimum utilization of the train systems. So you have increased reliability, uh, you are reducing uh, the cost through energy savings, environment is protected. These are the products what we do uh, for the infrastructure. So we have a uh, very accurate and a very uh, robust humidity and a temperature sensor which you can install in the weather stations. Uh, and it has been installed on the sides of the, uh, sides of the track on the railway side. So this is all what we do in the railway side and uh, uh, we have been doing uh, the work in India for the past one and a half years within which we have got uh, a decent success with the kind of quality and the other things we, what we have. We also do work with many other applications and uh, uh, you know uh, it, it's a diversified portfolio but railways obviously are one of the biggest focus because we do a lot of work in Europe, we do a lot of work in US, in China and uh, South Korea. This is how we have split it up. So the headquarters is in Austria, manufacturing is in Austria. Uh, then we have subsidiary across the world and distribution uh, at various places. So that's it from E plus E. We have a booth at the back. Uh, if you want to see the products, if you want to know a lot more about application, if you want to know a lot about the data with which this uh, presentation has come up, we have the real life data and we can, uh, we can share with you. So thank you so much for your time, uh, patient listening. Uh, I know it's hard in the evening when everyone wants to go back home, but uh, I would be happy if anyone has a question. So thank you so much.
Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Now, I would like to request Sri A.K. Singh to kindly come up on the dais to felicitate Mr. Ankush Mandari. Can we have you here, sir, on the stage, please? It was indeed a very powerful session. Looking forward to have more such informative uh, presentations from your side, sir. Can we have the memento, please? Truly a time to recall. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you.